Thank you for joining us for College Commons Week as we explore the next steps in the college admissions process. My name is Janine Kutu and I'm with the College Foundation of West Virginia. We are extremely excited to host our second annual College Commons Week, an opportunity that allows us to work together with college campuses to help students navigate the college going process. This afternoon, we are pleased to announce that representatives from Davis and El Elkins College have joined us for this webinar series. Joining us from Davis and Elkins College is Enrollment Advisor Emily McDonough. Thank you for joining CFWV for this new statewide initiative. Through this initiative, we aim to help West Virginia students and families prepare for and transition to college. As I get ready to turn the presentation over to our presenter, I would ask that you use the chat box to ask any questions you have throughout our time together this afternoon. Staff will be We'll address those questions and ensure that they are answered before we conclude today's webinar. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available on CFWB.com later this week. With that said, Emily, welcome. And now I turn this webinar over to you. Thanks so much, Janine. Uh, we really appreciate you having us and we'll jump right into it. Welcome everybody to Davis and Elkins College virtual webinar. We're happy you joined us today. If you're tuning in after the fact, um, we're glad you clicked on this video. So to start, I want to talk about our mission statement to prepare and inspire students for success and thoughtful engagement in the world. This is something we truly believe in and our students live it out day in and day out. In addition to that, on the screen, you'll see the seven steps in our enrollment process. These are very important and we are very hands-on throughout the enrollment process with all of our students. We are available for questions, tours, application questions, FAFSA questions, anything you may need, we'll help you out with it. So we do have an app that you can download for Davis and Elkins to get news notifications and information about what's going on on campus. Our application is free on our website. Uh, we encourage all prospective students and even students who have already made their decision to come here to enjoy a day with us. And um, some of the other steps in completing the application include sending your transcripts, completing your FAFSA and getting a package put together with scholarships, grants and loan opportunities and then making that $100 enrollment deposit. Um, and from there, you're then able to register for classes. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about these steps throughout the presentation and a little bit more about Davis and Elkins as a whole. We'll start with a quick video for you. So my name is Brooklyn Maxwell. I'm a freshman at Davis and Elkins College. I attended Buchanan Offshore High School and I am studying health and physical education. College in general is not even close to high school. The freedom that you have compared to a public school setting is completely insane. The professors here, I think they're more engaging with their students than high school teachers. They try to get to know their students. It's a lot different. Being part of the basketball team, it's, it's fantastic. It's like having a new family. <laughs> It, they made it a lot easier to transition into school, having familiarity. Playing basketball actually was a last minute decision. I didn't realize that I wanted to play basketball until my senior year of high school. I actually had gotten contact with one of the coaches and was just going to be happy with being a walk on. And then he offered me a scholarship and I was blessed to have the opportunity to get to start something new. Being a Highland Scholar pretty much paid for my school. I am. <laughs> I'm probably not going to have debt just because of the Highland Scholarship, so I'm very thankful for that. When I grow up, I want to be a physical education teacher and a basketball coach, and DNE is putting me in a position to get that degree that I want and teach me how to coach along the way. So here's a little bit more information about Davis and Elkins College. We're located centrally in West Virginia in a beautiful part of the country, 
Uh, surrounded by the mountains, uh, we have all four seasons here, which is really nice. We get to enjoy some snowfall and some sunny, warm days. We have a 172 acre campus that spans just 21 buildings. So it's a larger campus for our smaller student body of just under 800 students. On campus, uh, you'll get a world of experiences. We have over 32 different US states represented and 21 different countries. So with all that being said, um, one thing that we take great pride in is making college affordable for students. And we do give great financial aid packages. And I'll talk a little bit more about the different scholarships we offer, but we do give 98% of students financial aid. And with that comes along the d &E National and the Highland Scholarships. So here's a scholarship grid. Um, this might look like just a whole bunch of numbers to you. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about this in detail, but we do offer the d &E National, which is for students in, within the United States who have certain GPA and they fall between the 2.0 and 4.0 range. Um, we have the Highlands Regional Scholarship for students within certain counties nearby and the West Virginia Highlands Scholarship, which is for all students who live in the state of West Virginia, like many of you who may be tuning in. Um, in addition to those, we have a Presbyterian Scholarship. If you're part of the Presbyterian USA Church, you can earn $5,000 per year to attend Davis and Elkins. The Alumni Legacy, if you have a parent or grandparent who went to Davis and Elkins, um, and a few others. So just to touch a little bit more on the Highlands, which Brooklyn talked about in the video I showed, um, the Highlands West Virginia Scholarship is really, really valuable because if you're in the state of West Virginia and you have anything above a 2.8 or 2.5, I'm sorry, you will qualify for either 14 or $15,000. Um, so this is automatically applied to you upon acceptance. You don't have to write any essays or do anything on top of just being accepted to Davis and Elkins. So this scholarship makes college super affordable here as well as many of our others. And our Highlands Regional is also something that we offer to all of the students within the different counties listed. And you could see where those are on the map, every county surrounding our county, Randolph County. Um, if you live in those counties and you have above a 2.5 to a 3.7, you'll earn 19,000 and anything above a 3.8 will put you in the $20,000 range for the Highlands Scholarship. This is also automatically applied upon acceptance. On the screen now, you'll see a list of many of our majors. Some of our more popular ones are nursing. We have a four-year program in nursing as well as an associate's program. We have education, criminology, biology, math, business, outdoor recreation management, political science, and more, just to name a few. So for those of you who have applied, been accepted, and are ready to decide to come to Davis and Elkins College, we are ready for you. We are ready for you to join our class of 2025. And the way to do that is to submit your $100 enrollment deposit. And you can do that um, basically online. You can call in or you can come in person to do that. And it's a very easy process. Once you make that enrollment deposit, you will receive an email within 24 hours to schedule a Zoom link meeting with our registrar, Amelia Rossi. And she'll walk you step-by-step step through the, class, the classes you wanna take your first semester and make sure that you're well on your way to having a successful college experience and making sure you're setting yourself up for success in the future. We have tons of different learning support services here on campus. We have something called the Naylor Learning Center. 
and also the Writing Center, which spans the entire second floor of Albert Hall. And it is a place where you can go and get free tutoring services and um, just a quiet space where you can work on projects, papers, get advice from some of our employees in that office. And in addition to that, it's also where our supported learning program is housed. Our supporting learning, supported learning program is a program that you can join your freshman year and complete it throughout your entire four years. And it's for students with documented learning difficulties. And you basically pay to be in this program and you're supported with different seminars and success tips and you're immersed with all the knowledge and you're able to ask questions and get help whenever you need. We also have a employee, Angie Scott, who is on with us today. She's our Director of Student Recruitment and Success. Angie, would you like to talk about a little more about what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Welcome everyone. We're really excited that you're allowing us to have this opportunity with you today. And a little bit about what I do is I two, have twofold here. I help in the recruiting process, but I also help you throughout your four years that you're here. So anything that you go through the four years that you're here, we have all kinds of resources across campus that can help you. You just have to come see me, let me know what's going on. And I'm not the expert of everybody on campus, but I know who all the experts are. So there's not a situation you can't come to us with that we won't be able to help you, whether it be financial, um, you need counseling services, I work very closely with the Supported Learning Center and getting uh, academic success for our students. And we also have what we call an early alert system. So if you start missing a couple of classes, the professors are required to allow us or are required to report to me that you've missed some classes so I can reach out and make sure one, that you're okay, or two, you know, if you're sick that we can get you in to see the nurse, or sometimes whenever you miss a couple of classes, you feel like, you're so far behind that you're never going to get caught up. Well, this early alert system will help you with that because we'll reach out and have all kinds of resources available to you to make sure that you get caught up and, and stay on track. Awesome. Thanks, Angie. So to touch on counseling and wellness, we do have a full-time counseling services office here on campus and Miss Margaret Folletta is um, the head counselor in that department and the director. And she is always available to make sure our students' mental, emotional, and physical needs are being met. Um, she does offer something called Wellness Wednesdays in the Student Center, where she is there to just chat if you're having a good day or a bad day, but she's also available um, just to be a friendly face and on Wellness Wednesday, she hands out different things that can help with student wellness. For example, stress balls, fidget spinners, um, fun little things like that. So you'll definitely see her around campus if you plan to attend. Alrighty, so now about the admissions team. So um, Myself and Angie, who are here today, are part of the admissions team, as well as seven others. We have a transfer advisor, a visit coordinator, international advisor, and a few other enrollment advisors who work with specific last name letter groups. So if there's someone's name on here you recognize from receiving texts, emails, or calls from us, um, we are happy to speak with you anytime. So if you ever have a question, even if you think it's something silly, like how do I sign up to, for the residence halls? Send us a text, we'll help you out. Um, we also have a student athlete admissions liaison, Alicia Roth, who was a former student athlete here. And she also serves a dual role as an athletic trainer. And our director of admissions, Matt Shiflett, who does all the behind the scenes operations. Um, we're all here working for you and we're um, available for you whenever you need us. Here's a photo of our booth library. It is a three story building. We have a 24 hour computer and printing lab, breakout rooms for group projects and a quiet floor. Here's a checklist if you're still contemplating 
what you're looking for in a college, if any of these things ring a bell to you or seem like they may, may be a good fit, we love to hear from you and get you an opportunity to check out our campus. Now you'll see on the screen our brand new Miles Center for the Arts. This project was just completed in February. The large event space you see with all of the beautiful natural lighting is now used for open houses. So we'd love to have you for an open house. We have one coming up June 12th. So if you're available that day, come on and check us out. Uh, we also have our chapel on the left-hand side where our services take place for um, any of our faith-based services as well as our choir. Um, and we have an, a beautiful outdoor classroom area for warmer weather. Also in that building, we have a swimming pool, coaches offices, a large auditorium and the art department. Graceland and Halliehurst are the original buildings that were on the grounds before it became a college. They were the summer homes of US Senators Davis and Elkins. So we have a lot of great rich history here. These buildings now serve two different purposes. Halliehurst is where our Office of Admissions is, where I'm currently, and as well as Angie. And we also have our president's office there, alumni services, financial aid, and our advancement office. Graceland serves as a fully oper operational bed and breakfast. It has 12 Victorian style rooms and it is one of our hands-on learning projects for the hospitality and tourism program. It is a common site for wedding receptions and weddings because it overlooks the beautiful mountains. And it is a great place for parents or families to come stay if they're visiting their sons or daughters in Elkins. We have five different residence halls on campus. Two of them are specifically designated for incoming freshmen, Roxana Booth and Darby. Uh, and those are community style living. Upperclassmen halls include Gribble, Moyer and Presidential. Presidential is a little bit different because it is suite style. It's four bedrooms shared between a living room area and a more private bathroom area. So people tend to live there their junior and senior year once they make that tight knit friend group and those lifelong friends. Um, all across campus, we have free laundry. Don't worry about carrying quarters or reloading money to a card, it's all free. And on top of that, freshmen can have cars on campus. So if you're wondering about that or how to get a parking pass, no need to look further. You can park your car. We have plenty of parking spaces for you. Here's our campus map. So I pointed out a lot of these different buildings to you. Um, but a few other things I'd like to point out is our campus is very walkable. It takes about 10 minutes to walk from one side to the other. So you can roll out of bed and still get to class on time. Uh, we also have hiking trails and green spaces right on our campus. We have an outdoor athletics complex in the back where we have a baseball field, softball field, and a turf lighted field where our soccer and lacrosse programs compete. We have a paintball course just beyond that. 23 is the McDonald Center. It was built in 2005, holds about 2,200 fans, and it is where our basketball, volleyball, acro, and wrestling programs have their matches. Um, this area is the Miles Center. 20 is our Science Center. 10 is the library. Eight and nine are liberal arts and the Naylor Learning Center and Albert Hall. And the liberal arts building is a one-stop shop for anything you may need. Our registrar, our career services, or even our business office. And for any athletes, we have a separate training facility um, down towards our entrance of campus where you can train during the colder months and um, get ready for your seasons. And last but not least, we have our campus safety office. They are available 24 seven, 365. They're here to help our students with anything, even if it's just simply giving them a lift across campus. 
We are part of the Division II Mountain East Conference in part of the NCAA, and we have 24 different varsity sports. And we have our uh, smaller student body, which makes for a really great game day atmosphere. And over 40% of our students participate in athletics in some capacity. As for dining services, we have three different options on campus. Our main dining hall, which is a swiping in system where it's buffet style. You can go up as many times as you'd like. We have a salad bar, sandwich station, four hot foods that constantly change every day, a pizza area, ice cream, fountain drinks, and more. So it's a great place to hang out with students between classes and um, fuel up for the rest of the day. In the downstairs of the Madden Student Center, we have a beautiful lounge area where there's fireplaces, pool tables, couches, board games, our mail room where you can get a package sent to from home or from an outside um, retailer, and also our Cadillac Daddy Cafe, which is a made to order fast food style restaurant. They have foods like burgers and fries, quesadillas, chicken tenders, and fries. So that is a place where you can go to spend your Senator bucks, as well as the Caboose Cafe, which is a refurbished train caboose um, that is turned into a coffee shop. And it's our d &E version of a Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. So if you're on your way to class and need a warmer cold beverage, you can stop in there and get that. They also have pastries and small snacks. We have several different clubs and organizations on campus. Most of them are listed on the screen. We do have some up and coming ones as well as some that students are taking over for graduating seniors. We do have some Greek life, including some sororities and fraternities and a lot of different clubs that we highly encourage students to get involved in and try to figure out what they're passionate about. Our Elkins community is surrounded by some great outdoor recreation, which you may know if you've ever been. We have um, a lot of really cool outdoor adventure nearby. Uh, one thing in particular is our local ski resorts. We have Snowshoe Mountain, Timberline, and Canaan Valley, really close by within 50 miles. And the college often plans ski trips in the winter time for students. You can sign up, get on a bus, go skiing for the day, rent all the equipment for like $20. So it's a really fun thing to do on the weekends if it's cold out. Um, and there's also opportunities to go hunting, fishing, biking, hiking. So we have it all here. Here's a two minute video I'll play and this will give you more of an idea of what our community looks like and some of the opportunities available. The world looks a lot different now. We are adapting to a new normal. A number of things are uncertain, but it's in uncertainty that leaders rise. At Davis and Elkins College, we challenge our students and faculty to lead the way. With 45 academic programs, 35 student organizations, and a unique learning experience, we are prepared to adapt to change. And our students rise to the challenges set before them. Students here are encouraged to celebrate their diversity, express their creativity, engage in competition, and seize their futures. Because curiosity and free thinking opens minds and doors. And our hands-on learning approach guides the journey of self-discovery and success. Our campus is nestled in the town of Elkins, West Virginia, where it is surrounded by opportunities and adventure. Students are welcomed as a part of the community and encouraged to seek growth outside the classroom. And with access to winter sports and outdoor activities like camping, biking, hiking, and canoeing, there is no excuse for boredom. Rooted in more than 115 years of tradition, we remain committed to providing a safe campus and a nurturing environment that values ingenuity and thoughtfulness 
while fostering social, emotional, spiritual, and physical well-being. Despite uncertainty, some things stay the same. It's in uncertain times that leaders rise. Join us today in leading the way. And last but not least, uh, just a reminder, we are available to talk. We are offering virtual visits and in-person visits to tour our campus and maybe even speak with someone in your academic area of interest. You can schedule all of those online. We have openings Monday through Saturday, as well as a virtual option. We have an upcoming open house on June 12th. And we have something called leadership and scholarship event that we offer for accepted seniors with above a 3.0 GPA and it offers a variety of different interviews where you can qualify to win between $1,000 and a full ride and just for participating we offer a $500 scholarship so it's a really cool leadership and scholarship opportunity if you have applied or plan to, keep an eye out for emails about that in the fall and in the spring. All right, and that concludes the presentation. At this point, if you guys have any questions, um, I'll try to do my best to answer those. Thank you so much, Emily and Angie, for that wonderful presentation. It was definitely filled with um, helpful and useful information for incoming students. Um, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat, but I do have one that we've been hearing from students is, if students do not have a car on campus, is there a public transportation option available if needed? Sometimes we, a student life does take shuttles to the local Walmart store but everybody is, is such close friends. Whenever they see that they're going to Sheets to get something, grab something to eat or go to Walmart, um, you can get, there's plenty of opportunities to go with the, your friends that you make on campus, your roommates, uh, sweet mates, everyone is, is constant. Somebody's always going to Walmart. Great. Um, and then another question is, are first year students required to to attend some sort of um, new student orientation? Before COVID, we did have new student orientation options. Uh, we're still trying to see if we're gonna be able to um, open those back up this summer. It's not required, but we do strongly encourage anyone that is gonna be attending DE attend one of those sessions because it's very informational, get you familiar with campus. Great, thank you so much. And then lastly, what um, deposits or fees do students need to make sure they have ready before they arrive on campus? Just the $100 enrollment deposit is the only thing that is, is required. Um, now, once they are registered for classes, they may receive their student bill for the uh, semester. And then we can discuss how they can pay that bill via payment arrangements or if they want to pay it all off in one time. Great. And going off of that question, will um, students have an opportunity to maybe change or adjust their schedule um, later on if they decide um, they don't like one of their courses on their schedule? Absolutely. After they initially register with Amelia, if they see a class that they would like to take um, differently than what they have on their their previous schedule that first they can contact Amelia at any time prior to arriving to campus but that first week on campus they have the opportunity to add or drop any class. Awesome great information and going off of that what about textbooks do you have an on-campus bookstore for students to purchase textbooks or what resources do you have available for them? We do have a bookstore on campus and the friendly staff would be, be able to, all you have to do is bring in your schedule and the staff will help you find the textbooks. Or you can go on our website, um, get on the bookstore website 
off of our initial d and &E website and they will be able to assist you with getting books there as well. And you can order them ahead, have them ready to pick up whenever you come to campus. Great, thank you so much for all of those wonderful answers and great information. Before I go ahead and close, is there anything you'd like to add? I would just say, come check us out. If you've never been to Elkins, it's a beautiful place. Come check us out and we hope to hear from you soon. Thanks again for your time. All right. Thank you so much. We want to thank the team from David and Elkins for joining CFWV during College Commons Week. Please be sure to reach out to them with any questions you may have, and thank you to those who have joined us to participate in this webinar series. If we could be of any further assistance, please reach out to us at cfwv.com, and have a wonderful afternoon, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye.